Hi you guys. So Christmas is coming so I thought I would do some videos on some inexpensive but extremely cool Christmas gifts for you to give. This is a Hori Hori. It is a gardening tool for digging. It also has the serrated edges there for cutting. Um, cutting rope and twine and bales of hay and stuff like that. It's a full tang. Very wonderful. Um, I don't remember how much it cost. 29 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. Great tool. I also suggest a temperature gauge for the soil. Uh, it gets down pretty low, but when you plant, you don't really want to check the temperature of the air so much as you want to know what the soil temperature is. This one I got off Amazon, it was like 10 bucks. All right, so now we're in my shop outside where I have all my canning jars. Of course, canning jars and canning lids are a great gift for anybody who's a home canner. Uh, another great gift is one of these uh, multi-use canners. This is either a steam, atmospheric steam canner, or it can be a water bath canner. The reason I like this better than the old enamel ones is that this is extremely, well not extremely, but it's pretty deep. Um, some of the uh, enamel ones, you can barely get two inches of water over it before it boils all over, but here you can see you get a good three almost four inches of water over the top of a jar or you can steam can and I've done a few videos on that with this canner um, which is one reason I really like it but if you are uh, starting to pressure can this is the Presto uh, 23 quart this is a great pressurized starter canner for anybody um, it has multiple safety valves. It's got um, a vent here. This will blow, the top here will um, blow off if there's too much pressure inside. Um, this one will, actually this one is the one that blows off. This one will pop up and vent. So you've got two vents plus an emergency backup. So this thing is not going to um, overflow. This is where steam comes out. You can put a weight on it as well. So not only is steam escaping, but um, it's a weighted canner with a dial, so you've got two ways to check what's going on inside, so that's awesome. Um, down here, I know it's not a great shot, but this is an all-American canner. This is the 921, I think. This is the biggest um, canner made, a pressure canner made for home use. And it was, geez, I don't know, it's like four or five hundred dollars now, so it's it's out of a lot of people's range, but I got it years ago as a gift. Um, it's a great canner um, with no rubber parts and stuff, things don't really break on it, but I do have backup, so for all the important parts. Uh, a Presto canner like this should be under a hundred bucks. I don't know what they're running right now. Presto 23 is what you're going to want to look up, and this is the Harvest um, Atmospheric steam canner and water bath canner. This is one of the few that are recommended by the USDA um, now that they've approved steam canning. Uh, it's got the temperature gauge built into the handle, so that is another way to find this. This was, uh, I don't know, $99 or something like that. If you're looking for a pair of outdoor boots, I highly recommend Muck brand, M-U-C-K. Uh, the different models uh, don't vary that much, but they're waterproof, they're winterproof, they're wonderful proof. Uh, this pair I have, I think these are at least five years old. I have a secondary pair here, which is the chore instead of the hoser, but really there's not that much difference other than the toe. And of course my husband uses the same boots as well, but that's a great boot to have. All right, so now we're in the kitchen. We'll start over here with some cast iron. If you don't have cast iron, um, this is a great gift. Great gift for anybody would be happy to get some of this cast iron. All of this is pretty old, like 100 years old. This one was made in Taiwan, so it's, um, oh, I can't remember. It's a Wagner, um, but it's not that old, maybe only 50, 60 years old. But these um, are all... Pretty old, yeah, it's a Wagner too. So um, they have a little number here, like eight, and then uh, the lid would correspond with that. It's an eight inch pan, this is a 10 inch. Um, I don't know why I keep flipping all these over. This is an unmarked pan. 
Um, so you get these little like flapjack skillets, but they also work as a lid too, um, which is really nice. And they're just a little less heavy because they're not quite as thick. But all of these I inherited, but you can still find them at thrift stores. The New Lodge, if, is, it's a good brand, but if you look at it, the bottom is very textured. It's very um, kind of almost like a volcanic rock. It takes a long time to get them uh, down into this kind of a shape where they're so seasoned. Um, but I use them time and time and time again. So anyway, that's a great gift. Here I have uh, three different kinds of Dutch ovens for you to look at. This allows you to cook as if you have an oven on top of a wood stove or a pellet stove or an open fire or a barbecue or a campfire, etc. So I love a good old fashioned Dutch oven. You know what those little nipply things are for? Self basting. So when the condensation comes up off the top, it comes up from the pan and goes on the top, it drips off and drips back inside. So this is uh, just a you know, regular cast iron. These are both also cast iron. They're enamel, so you can look at how much I've used this. So you can cook things that have high acid in it, like a, a stew or tomatoes, tomato sauce, because if you put it in here, it's going to wear at the iron and get a funny metallic taste. So if you cook a long time in this, sometimes you get a funny metallic taste. If you have acid in your food, like tomatoes, vinegar, things like that, even some alcohols. Uh, this one I got at a thrift store for, I don't know how much, 20 bucks. This one I also got at a thrift store. Um, it's seen better days. It's heavy as hell. I got this for 10 bucks. And these, again, I inherited. And I have many, many more than this. But it's a great way to be able to cook in a number of different ways. Plus, some things are just better in cast iron. You know, a steak it's better in cast iron. Um, home potatoes, better in cast iron. So anyway, another gift idea. I also wanted to show you this. Sometimes you come across these cast iron things that are kind of uh, gimmicky. This is for cornbread, so you can have a little corn pone, long, skinny corn bread thing. I mean, it's a nice piece. It's about 100 years old as well, but really it's hardly worth using. What you get out, it's hard to get everything out of there. It's not easy to cook in, and they're just small, and they break. And Anyway, I haven't had good success, so I might steer clear of something like this, unless you know you know somebody that's decorating their kitchen in corn or whatever other mold um, you come across. I know this isn't something I'd usually show, but the soda streams, man, they've saved us so much money in soda pop and energy drinks because you can buy... Um, all the different flavors and make your own. Um, like here's a soda stream, but that is an energy drink um, with the little cartridges in the back. We're going to do a hack on that because um, the cartridges, the CO2 cartridges are expensive. They're like 30 bucks each when you swap them out. But if you buy a, a rent a big tank of CO2, you can refill these or you can just hook the big tank up. Anyway, we're going to do a hack on that in a little while. But um, yeah, all different kinds of flavorings, even like here's a cola flavored, you can get root beer and stuff. Here's another kind of an energy orange, pumpkin pie. So these are coffee flavors, uh, but they work in soda just as well. So soda stream, I don't know, 120 bucks, something like that. I'd also suggest, ooh, sorry for that, metal bowls. Nobody can have enough metal bowls. Uh, new, they go for 30, 40 bucks each, but I got all these at different garage sales for like five bucks. Uh, my favorite cleaver, this is a Chicago cutlery cleaver. Um, I bought a, a replacement one for this, so I've got one here and one out in my uh, trailer. They're about 20 bucks used. This is, is holds an edge, um, and you'll see it in a lot of my videos. This is what I use instead of a regular knife to cut with because you can scrape with it. You can chop fine. Um, I can do lots of things with this, so I really like my cleaver. And speaking of sharp, um, sharpening your own tools, sharpening your own knives, super easy when you have the right gear. So I use the WorkSharp knife and tool sharpener. Uh, it's a belt system, and it comes with uh, various kinds of grip belts. Really easy to use, easy to remove. Um, you can see the different 
angles it gives you. You can do serrated knives, scissors, regular knives, and then you put this on and you can do um, tools. So I can sharpen a shovel on here, a pair of loppers, whatever. Had this for years. Uh, it works great. When I got it, it was right around $100. I would um, really never go without this. And this is my go-to gift for weddings. Um, I know it's a weird gift to give somebody, but, you know, a sharp knife is a knife that probably won't cut you where a dull knife will. So, anyway, work sharp. Food processor. Again, this is a pretty expensive gift, but if you want one that's going to last for a lot of years and is easy to use, I mean, on button, off button, and pulse, right? On, pulse, and not a whole bunch of different buttons, but comes with good... Um, Sharp slicers, shredders, cutters, choppers. Uh, this is this is the one to get. I can't tell you how much it was. One hundred and eighty, two hundred dollars. I whenever I buy anything for the kitchen, I go to the company American Test Kitchens because they test all different kinds of uh, appliances and pots, pans, knives, yada yada yada. And this is the one they've been recommending for the last five years in a row. So. It's a Cuisinart 14 cup food processor. I got this at Best Buy with a 20% off coupon, so that's where that came from. Have you ever wondered what's back here in my Hoosier? Well, this is the appliance garage, and I have another Cuisinart um, blending system in here. It's a 5.5 quart stand mixer. Um, you know how these work. It mixes, it stands, makes bread, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I am always torn between Cuisinart and KitchenAid. I actually think KitchenAid makes a better mixer. Um, they're also less expensive. This one, I don't even know how much it costs, $300 or something. Um, but the KitchenAids, you can sometimes get them for under $200. By Mark carries them. Um, and especially if you get an off color, for some reason they make lots of colors, but sometimes like the blue ones go on extra special sale. I don't know why that is, but I love KitchenAid and I like Cuisinart. These are um, expensive at first blush, but these are appliances you will have until way beyond retirement. They'll last 30, 40, 50 years. All right, so we're continuing into the world of the kitchen. This is a Mercer bread knife. I just got this. Uh, it was another recommendation from America's Test Kitchen. I had a couple serrated knives that um, were Henkels, actually, but they're going on 40 years old, and they have lost their edge, and um, it's just time to get new knives. The handles were getting beat up, and etc. This has a nice kind of rubberized handle. It's got good grip. That's my preference for any knife I have. I like a rubberized handle, you know, with a pocket knife or whatever. So... This was uh, like around $19. This is, uh, actually, let me show you. So this is also rubber. This is a garlic peeler. Makes quick work of garlic. So you put the garlic in here, peels and all. Move that out of the way. Give it a roll back and forth. Put, put it out. And you've got peeled garlic that fast. This is around uh, $4.95. Great for the person that needs something in the kitchen and uh, they already have everything. They may not even have ever seen this before. This is an old school tool. Do you know what this is? It's like a big garlic press, isn't it? This is a ricer and you put uh, potatoes in here that have been cooked and if you want smooth mashed potatoes like you've never had before, you push it through, it squirts out all over the place, fun for the kids to do, and they come out smooth with no lumps. Um, this particular one, I think, is from the 20s, was my grandmother's. Um, they have, they sell some now that are plastic. I'd go to a thrift store and pick this up. It was free to me, but um, I've seen them for anywhere from five to ten dollars. Very cool. Exfoliating gloves. You can use them for beauty, but you can also use them to clean things like potatoes. I've done a couple of videos on this. So the, they're meant to be put on and you put soap on it and you exfoliate your skin, right? But if you put these on and then plunge your hand into a bunch of dirty potatoes or carrots or whatever root vegetable you're doing, it's so easy to clean this off rather than trying to, you know, find a scrub brush that'll do it. So shh, five bucks. You can get them in any 
uh, beauty center. Even in the grocery store, these will be where the soaps are sold. And then finally right here, I've got, I don't even know what kind this is, a dash of that. Who cares? But a good pair of kitchen shears, ones that come apart for easy cleaning because you're going to be using these probably on meat like I do. You'll cut anything open on them. With that work sharp system, I can keep these nice and sharp, but I think it's important to get shears that come apart. Um, these were around 10 bucks at Fred Meyer. All right, so now I have a little scale here for you. Uh, I don't know if it matters what brand of scale you get, but a good scale that will measure in pounds, ounces, and grams. Um, so here's the pounds. Am I doing the wrong, yeah, the wrong one? So grams, mLs, ounces. So anyway, you get the idea. Almost everybody at some point is going to need a scale. You, if you need it for cooking or for chemistry, right? So if you're putting together um, chemicals for the yard outside, you need a good scale as well. Um, not everything comes in measuring cups, you know, that you can measure this way. Weight is far more accurate than measuring by volume. Okay. Good, good idea. Um, Amazon, $25, I don't know. So speaking of American Test Kitchen, I needed to get um, a new uh, egg pan and a new 10-inch skillet. Um, these were recommended by American Test Kitchen. Again, they've been great uh, pans. I've used them a lot. I've had them for a couple years now. Um, they, you can buy them as a set for about 40 bucks. I mean, they're not that expensive, and they're heavy, heavy duty. Not as heavy as cast iron, but they're heavy. They're OXO, O-X-O, O-X-O. Good, good pans. You can get them off QVC. You can get them off Amazon. You can get them off OXO site itself, Fred Meyer, wherever. So, these, but these are excellent, excellent pans. God, it's like I can't get out of the kitchen. Every time I turn around, I see something that I need to show you. Old coffee grinder, not Mr. Coffee anymore now, it's Mr. Pepper. I grind my own herbs and spices, great to have. Uh, these are t about 10 bucks. Um, if you get them at a thrift store, they're even cheaper, but it's nice to have an old extra one around that's strictly for spices because you don't want your coffee tasting like pepper or your pepper tasting like coffee. And well, maybe you do, but you know what I mean. Another Cuisinart product, no, I'm not sponsored by them, I wish I was, the Immersion Blender. This is a gift from heaven. Uh, this one has got two speeds. It's a heavy duty um, stick blender is what they call them or immersion blender because they can go into wet stuff. This is what I use to make my tomato sauce, uh, my hot sauce, anything that I want blended up, even a milkshake. I could use this and just pop it in there instead of having to break out my big blender or my food processor. This is a workhorse. Uh, again, I don't know, 39 bucks, something like that. All right, so if you know somebody who wants to start doing some fermentation, uh, we can look at the big crocks, but oftentimes you want to start small, and you can start just even in a mason jar. I've got a few videos on making pickles, um, fermented pickles, fermented sauerkraut, green fermented green beans, fermented asparagus, all by using um, one of these jars. And when you start, uh, you want to start maybe using more tools than you normally would uh, like now I can ferment just using a regular lid on here, but these are some inexpensive, uh, it's like a check valve. It's got, it's a one-way valve. I don't know if you can see that. It opens up to let gas out, but when it's closed, no air gets in. They just fit over the top of uh, wide mouth jars and they just screw down into place. So if you have something in there that's bubbling away, fermenting, it'll escape. This came in a pack of four. I don't know how much they were. Ten bucks, twelve bucks, something like that. And then this is just a fun little thing to have. We use uh, glass jars as our just regular drinking jars. So this is a nice little set from Ball. Um, the top just goes on and comes with a straw. Now you got a drinking glass that you're not going to, if you knock it over, it's not any big deal. All right, so we've got some couple really old school Crocs out here. Uh, you may recognize this one from my sauerkraut video. I used the number four for that. And then here's a big uh, Pacific Stoneware 10 uh, from Portland, Oregon, which is uh, 
approximately where I live. Uh, this is a big one, needs to be cleaned out. It's been more of a decoration than anything because it's just so gigantic. Inside this crock, which we got off Craigslist, um, I don't know, 50 bucks, something like that, new. They, you can still buy them new, they're around 80 bucks or so. But inside, I want to show you this, there are weights. And so uh, this is important to have if you're fermenting on a big volume because you need to keep everything under the water or under the brine. So if you have sauerkraut in there, you'd put this weight this way on top of it, this weight this way, and then that would press down and keep everything under the water level. So it's got a nice little lid and it works great. But I'll show you uh, another one that I have. Um, out in the shed and layman sells this other one but we'll go take a look at that all right here's my other crock um, this is a little different it's got a lid with channels on it big and brown and pretty deep so I but it's about a two right two gallon so if you put something in there you'd need to weight it down with something separate but what makes this unique is then you put brine or water into this channel Put the lid on and gas will escape past these little cutouts and bubble up through the water um, but won't let air in so this is just a different way of doing that same um, thing that we showed with the little ball rubber tops i think you guys have seen my sun oven a million times before but this is also a great gift new they're uh, like 300 and a quarter something like that but we got our last one off of craigslist for 50 bucks so if you put a search you might very well find a new one this is a way to cook in the sun even if you don't have heat in the middle of winter as long as the day is sunny you can still cook in this device i can show you more if you are interested i can send you a link on a video about that all right, so let's talk about lanterns for a minute. These are extremely cool and very inexpensive. These are kerosene lanterns. I believe you can also use uh, white gas in them. They're an old brand. They're Dietz, D-I-E-T-Z. They make a whole bunch of different kinds of these. Um, very easy to use. They're called a hurricane lantern because even in high winds outside, they won't go out, so you need to... Um, pull up the globe, I can't do that one handed, and blow it out yourself. These come in all different shapes, all different sizes. E the biggest ones even come with a cooking device on top. These put out a lot of heat and again they're made to go inside or outside. It's just, they're just great. Um, and they're not very expensive, they're only under like 20 bucks each. You can get some very small ones for extremely inexpensive and even the biggest one I think is like twenty nine dollars or something so great backup to have in case the power goes out the big one you can cook on um, these will go like up to 24 hours with kerosene in them um, if you're burning them inside make sure to get indoor kerosene because it doesn't stink so bad anyway um, still uh, brass or black they also have silver Great. I have like uh, eight of these. They're all scattered throughout the house. You've probably seen them before. Definitely you saw them when the power went out video. Um, you'll also probably have some of these around your house. These are just also a kerosene or what they call an oil lamp, but they're really referring to kerosene. Yes, you can burn like olive oil or something in here, but you're going to gum up everything. Um, I would save that for maybe one lamp and um, when they say an oil lamp, they mean a kerosene lamp. They're using uh, oil and kerosene interchangeably. So this gets off, gives off about the same amount of light as a candle. Um, but I want to show you an Aladdin lamp. When you think Aladdin, you think the genie, don't you? <laughs> so Aladdin made lamps, um, let's see here, uh, to the beginning in about 1908 through the turn uh, well through the turn of the century they're still making them today um, this is from about the 1900s uh, so is this one this is called the Lincoln drape um, this one is a replica it's newer uh, the blue one but the thing about these Aladdins is they're a, a mantle kind of a lamp you know like the old lanterns that we used to carry around like uh, the Coleman's um, and it puts out the same amount of light as a 60-watt light bulb, which is just amazing to me. Um, 
they run on kerosene. They're very beautiful. These are uh, stand type ones. Back in the day, this is what people had in their home, this brand. They had, um, well, let me show you. You've seen this kind of a lamp before, right? But this is an electrified one. Back in the day, it would have been the same kind of a lamp, but over here, there would have been some kind of an oil reservoir, and they would have used this as a desk lamp. Um, they also had uh, lamps that hung from the ceiling, like over your dining room table, and many that are attached to walls like this. See, the bottom is different. This is called a shelf lamp. It doesn't have that long neck on the bottom, and it's meant to be put up somewhere high and out of the way. I very much encourage you, if you get a kerosene lamp, lamp or lantern, have a place for it that's not somewhere where anybody is going to inadvertently knock it over. Even in the middle of a dining room table, I get worried about lamps getting knocked over. So up high on a wall, you've got, see this has got a reflective piece. This is cast iron. This is uh, 1890s, something like that. I got this at a garage sale. These are going new, this one and the other lamps. Let's go back and look at those. You can get a kit uh, that has all the parts. So the lamp, there's a carburetor in here, an oxygen carburetor. There's the, I don't know what this thing is it calls, it goes up and down with the uh, glass uh, pipe, whatever you call that up there. Uh, Gosh, I think they're like $300 right now, which is incredibly expensive. Um, this one I inherited. This one I bought as a kit about 15 years ago. But a lot of ours, even this one with this beautiful shade, right? It's got the whole bit together here. Uh, we got a garage sale for $15. People don't know what they have sometimes. What you'd want to do is look at the lamp see if all the parts seem to be there and you can Google that. But on the twist here, it'll say Aladdin and it'll give the model number. But all of them say Aladdin and, you know, different type for different years. That one. This one. And um, many of the lamps have interchangeable parts. Um, like if this carburetor went bad, I could change it out for this one. Um, like the stand-up ones often were interchangeable, depending on the year, of course. You know, if it's turn of the century and you're looking at one that was made this year, it may not, but a lot of the parts are interchangeable, and they do take a lot of parts, so you have to have extra lanterns on hand. Um, the globes, you know, the glass flutes, all that stuff. But again, it puts out heat, and they burn, like, at 60-watt light bulbs, so that's very helpful when the power goes out. In my video, when the power went out, we showed... Um, some of the Aladdins there as well burning, so you could check that out. All right, you guys, and to finish up this video, of course, again, I have to talk about a bidet. Getting a bidet is such a helpful thing to cut down on toilet paper waste and to keep your nether regions clean. This one is a Tushy brand. It sells for under a hundred bucks, and you can buy them for anywhere from forty nine to uh, $500. All right, so that's the end of this video. Um, I hope you found some ideas for some Christmas gifts. If you're having problems locating something, I don't know if I can help you at all. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I got at thrift stores or, uh, you know, at estate sales, it's the luck of the draw, but I thought I'd put this video out early so you guys could get, um, you know, get it on your shopping list and get it going now, especially this year with uh, shipping being so slow. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you later. Let me know if you have any questions.